Chapter 18 has our only discussion of group four, our aromatic compounds. And this chapter is all about reactions of benzene and substituted benzenes. And if you're taking notes, you'll get used to drawing hexagons in this chapter. So group four, our aromatic compounds. Okay, we'll talk about benzene. We'll talk about a little bit heterocycles at the end. So we talked about benzene last semester in chapter eight. Right? Benzene is aromatic, meaning it has exceptional stability because it fits certain criteria, right? It has to be cyclic, it has to be planar, right? It has to have an uninterrupted cloud of pi electrons, mean nothing can be sp3 hybridized, right? And it has to have a huckled number of pi electrons, or the 4n plus 2 or an odd number of pairs, right? The slides talk about three pairs. Huckled number of electrons, 4n plus 2. Right? Exceptionally stable, we see it all over the place. It's common in nature, right? It's common in synthesis. It's really common in drug development, right? More than 70% of drug candidates have at least one benzene ring, right? And it's common in street drugs as well. There's meth hanging out right there in the middle. Common in... Right, toxic compounds, Agent Orange had benzene in there. Okay. You see it all over the place. So obviously reactions with benzene are significant. Okay. And we need to know how to name them. And luckily we've seen a lot of this, right? It's been sprinkled into the chapters earlier in the semester. Okay. If we have benzene with just one substituent, okay, you just say the substituent name before benzene. That's not technically IUPAC, Okay, some of them might be, but it's the easiest way to say it, right? Bromobenzene, chlorobenzene, nitrobenzene, ethylbenzene, piece of cake. But some of the names for these benzene compounds include the substituent with it. And these you do need to know on this slide, right? These monosubstituted benzenes that have special names that incorporate the substituent. We've seen benzaldehyde, we've seen benzoic acid, I've introduced phenol and toluene before, right? And you should know those four plus aniline, without a doubt, right? And be familiar with the others, benzonitrile, benzene sulfonic acid, styrene, and anisole. Okay, so be familiar with all those names. You'll see them on your sapling. Without a doubt, no toluene, phenol, aniline, benzaldehyde, benzoic acid. We also have the situation where the group itself, the benzene group, is a substituent. And I've talked about this in the past as well, right? Just a benzene ring is called a phenyl group. A benzene ring plus that methylene group is called a benzyl group. So we see those incorporated in names as well. Okay. So we've already seen that in the past. That's good. Okay. If I've got benzene with alkyl groups and they don't have a special name like toluene, I name it as an alkyl substituted benzene. Okay. So if my alkyl group has a name, it's easy. Okay. Isopropyl, right? Secbutyl, tertbutyl those work. But I have to have original names for everything. So if that group, that alkyl group, doesn't have a unique name, then I name it as a phenyl substituted alkane. So now I'm treating the phenyl group as a substituent and naming the parent chain. Okay? I couldn't call these secpental because right, they're the same thing. I need to name it as a phenyl substituted alkane. The only exception right, is toluene, of course, and if toluene has more than one substituent, then I just name it as one methyl benzene. So you'll have that with your nomenclature. But we've also discussed previously the idea of an aryl group. Right? An aryl group means you've got benzene or a substituted benzene somewhere else. Yep. So each of these could be substituted as an aryl alcohol, A-R-O-H, because this is an aryl group, this is an aryl group, this is an aryl group. So now that we know the nomenclature, how do these things react? That's the important part from this chapter. And we did introduce that in chapter eight as well, an electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction. That's how benzene reacts. Electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction, E-A-S-R, right? Abbreviated that way. Take benzene, it's got a cloud of pi electrons above and below the ring, okay? So it's not gonna react with any nucleophile, but it will react with an electrophile in a substitution reaction because it wants to maintain its aromaticity. 
That's something we talked about last semester. Here in chapter 18, we're going to focus on these specifics for these reactions. Okay? And there's five EASR reactions we're going to look at in this chapter. Halogenations, nitrations, sulfonations, friedel crafts acylations, and alkylations. And we'll look at the first two in this video and then the other three in video two. It seems like a lot, but they're all the same type of reaction. They all take a hydrogen from benzene and replace it for something else. And once the electrophile is generated, the mechanism is the same. Okay? So you should definitely know the overall mechanism for EASR without a doubt. But what you should focus on, because we did learn that previously, right? freshen up there, and then focus on knowing how these electrophiles are generated for these five reactions. Yeah, because as you'll see, right, once I have the electrophile Y plus right here, benzene reacts with it, has those three resonance contributors, right? nice resonance stabilized carbocation intermediate, and then a base comes in to pull a proton off to reestablish the aromaticity. Yeah. And one thing to look out for right, is note that the proton that's pulled off here is the same one where the electrophile added. Right? The electrophile substitutes for hydrogen. Two-step reactions, okay, the first step is the slow step because it's breaking the aromaticity, right? It takes a lot of energy, largely endergonic, right? But then after that, it's a fast step because I'm regenerating the aromatic compound. So with that in mind, the general ideas for the reactions, let's look at specifics, okay? For halogenations, we've got two types, bromination and chlorination go one way, iodination goes a different way. Okay, for bromination and chlorination, these two require a Lewis acid catalyst, which we also introduced in chapter eight, ferric bromide or ferric chloride. We need that Lewis acid catalyst because otherwise the halogens aren't a good enough electrophile, okay? Because benzene's not gonna just react with anybody. So these Lewis acid catalysts accept a share of the electrons from the halogen to make it a better electrophile okay? because we weaken the bond, give it a better leaving group. So know that, right? Benzene plus Br2 or Cl2 requires a Lewis acid catalyst, FeBr3 or FeCl3, depending on the halogen. And then we replace hydrogen with the halogen. And this is what generation of the electrophile looks like. Okay? A lone pair from one of the bromines attacks the iron, right, which has the valence room to accept that. It weakens the bond right here, gives us a better leaving group, which allows now benzene to come in and attack. Okay? Now, and again, after that, it's just the same exact reaction mechanism as what we've seen before. Okay? But do note here, you know, with the online format, we have to be as succinct as possible, but only the one resonance contributor is shown here. Were this, you know, asked on a written test, for example, you would be expect, expected to show all three of the resonance contributors there. Yep. So after that, same general reaction scheme. We've seen it before. Okay? The base that's coming in right here to pull off the proton could be the solvent, right? Could be FeBr4 right here acting as a base. A couple of different possibilities. Right? And then the same thing for chlorination below. Now, those ferric bromide and ferric chloride catalysts aren't stable. Right? We're not going to keep those on the shelf. We have to make them in the solution. Right? That's known, I think I've used this before. We generate it in situ, right? which is Latin for on site. That's used a lot in chemistry in situ. Right? It means you make it right in the reaction right? because otherwise we didn't activate it with moisture. Okay, so we make it by adding either bromine or chlorine to iron shavings. What about iodine, the third halogen? Okay, well, that one, we don't use a Lewis acid catalyst. We use an oxidizing agent. That converts our iodine, I2, into I+. Okay, and that's the reaction shown down there in the bottom. We commonly see hydrogen peroxide used as an oxidizing agent. That takes our I2 to I+, gives us a better electrophile. Okay. has to be under acidic conditions, which is why we have a couple drops of sulfuric acid. But once we have the I+, plus, okay, we're in business. Same reaction mechanism. 
So that's our halogenation. What about nitration? Well, nitration is possible, but it takes pretty nasty conditions. You have to use both sulfuric acid and nitric acid together to get the nitro group on benzene. So those are the overall reactions. Okay, Make sure you know those. How does that generate an electrophile? Well, with my nitric acid, right, it protonates, it, or sorry, gets protonated by sulfuric acid, which gives me a better leaving group. Okay, That can actually leave as water, and then I form nitronium. That's a really good electrophile. That reacts with benzene. Okay? And again, it's the same exact mechanism. So the emphasis for this video and the next video, well, we'll get a named reaction in video too, right? Friedel Crafts. But know how the electrophiles are generated because the mechanism's the same. Know the conditions that are necessary to react.